Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a, b, and c are positive integers. Then, the least common multiple of c, a, and c, b is equal to c times the least common multiple of a and b. Now, let's remind ourselves the definition of least common multiple. Our definition is as follows. Suppose a and b are non-zero integers. Then the least common multiple of a and b is the smallest positive integer n such that a divides n and b divides n. In other words, the least common multiple of a and b is the smallest positive integer n such that m is equal to a times some integer and m is equal to b times some integer. Okay. So now, let's get into proving this theorem. To start out, let's call j the least common multiple of c, a, and c, b, and let's call k the least common multiple of a and b. So essentially, we want to show that j is equal to c times k. And to show that, what we could do is we could show that j is less than or equal to c times k, and c times k is less than or equal to j. If we can show those two things, then it will follow that j is equal to c times k. And so the proof will be complete. Okay, now to start, what does it mean for j to be the least common multiple of c, a, and c, b? Well, by our definition, it means that j is the smallest positive integer such that c, a divides j and c, b divides j. So we know that CA divides J and CB divides J. Applying the definition of least common multiple again, we know from here that A divides K and B divides K. But now, what do these four things mean? Well, to say that CA divides J means J is equal to CA times some integer. We'll call that integer P. And really, we're going to be applying that idea four times. So from here, there are four integers, P, Q, R, and S, such that J is equal to C, A times P, J is equal to C, B times Q, K is equal to A times R, and K is equal to B times S. Now let's take these last two equations and multiply C on both sides of them. And now we see that CA times an integer gives us CK and CB times an integer gives us CK. And that tells us that CA divides CK and CB divides CK. So what we see here is CK is a positive integer such that CA divides CK and CB divides CK. But J is the least common multiple of CA and CB, which means J is the smallest positive integer such that CA divides J and CB divides J. Right? So that tells us that J must be less than or equal to CK. Okay, so we've shown j is less than or equal to ck, so all that's left to show is that ck is less than or equal to j. And to do that, let's take a look at our first two equations. What we're going to do is we're going to divide c to the other side of both of them. Now let's keep in mind that j over c is a positive integer. The reason why is because, well, we know that j over c is equal to an integer times an integer. So that tells us that j over c must be an integer. But j over c must also be positive since j is positive and c is positive. So yeah. Now, well from here we see that a times an integer gives us j over c and b times an integer gives us j over c. And that tells us that a divides j over c and b divides j over c. So j over c is a positive integer such that a divides j over c and b divides j over c. But remember, since k is the least common multiple of a and b, 
This means that k is the smallest positive integer, such that a divides k and b divides k. And that tells us that k must be less than or equal to j over c. And multiplying c to the other side, we get that ck is less than or equal to j. So we have shown that j is less than or equal to ck, and ck is less than or equal to j. And that tells us that j must be equal to ck. Since j is equal to this and k is equal to this, this means we have shown that this is true. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.